Do you associate power meters with professionals? Something that you only need if you're racing or taking your training really seriously? Well, yes, professionals do use power meters, but there's still a lot that all of us could gain from using them no matter what level your cycling is at. Exactly, in which case, it's about time we cover the benefits of the power meter and how you can use one to improve your own cycling. meter gives you that additional metric, your wattage, the amount of power that you are putting down through your cranks and it's instantaneous so as soon as you put down more power the number will increase and as soon as you ease up the number will back off and this is the most significant difference between heart rate and power and one of the main advantages. Having this instant feedback allows you to accurately measure your effort. It's black and white, the numbers don't lie, although do just make sure your power meter is calibrated. The other two common measurements, heart rate and speed, can be affected by so many factors. Speed being the most obvious, you've got headwinds versus tailwinds, downhill compared to uphill, drafting or riding solo, the road surface, your position on the bike. I mean, I could go on. Trying to compare your output day to day, even on the same stretch of road, is pretty unreliable. And then heart rate has more subtle limitations, but there's the problem with the lag that I've already mentioned. As you increase your effort, your heart rate isn't going to increase until some time after. On top of that, there's some other things that can affect your heart rate, such as dehydration, caffeine, and even fatigue. Now the benefits of the power meter actually go far beyond simply this accurate and real-time feedback that they provide. It's also what you do with these numbers that can really make the difference. Now, if you're new to using a power meter, I'd actually suggest you just head out as you normally do on your rides and start to observe the numbers that it starts to produce for you. And with time, you'll start to learn what's normal for you and how it changes with different efforts. And as you do start to become more accustomed to it, you can maybe start including some structured workouts in which you use power. Now to do this, you're probably going to want to know your functional threshold power. Now, there's a number of ways we can find this number out. And the most common is doing the 20-minute FTP test, where you ride as hard as you can for 20 minutes, you monitor and you record your power data, and then you take 95% of that average power. And that is your FTP. But if you want to find out more on that, we do have videos over on GTN which explain it in detail. And you can find those in the description down below. Now I should actually point out that most people find a difference in their power output when riding indoors versus outdoors and typically most people find that they can put out more power when riding outdoors so if you have done your FTP test indoors but you are doing a majority of your training outdoors then it's worth bearing that in mind and obviously vice versa. The same goes for hills, a lot of people find they can put out more power on hills so I would always advise you try and find a nice flat section to do your FTP test on if you are doing it outside but hopefully by this point you're thinking yeah a power meter is worth investing in but should I go for pedal based a crank based a hub based single sided dual sided there are so many options out there it's a total minefield but fortunately again we've got a video on that which goes into some comprehensive detail and I'll link that in the description just down below. Power isn't measured in watts. That part is straightforward. And like I said, it's instantaneous. It gives you that feedback straight away. But that comes with a slight problem. Even the most professional cyclists are not going to be able to maintain a very constant power all the time. And as a result, you'd see numbers constantly flicking and changing, which are not only hard to read, but also quite hard to interpret. So you've got a couple of options. You can use average power, which will obviously give you average power throughout the whole ride. And this can work quite well if you're, say, doing intervals and you're using the lap function on your bike computer and you ride to that average power. But there's another option, because that doesn't work so well if you're, say, riding on a long ride in a group or you're on uneven terrain. And this is where the three second power window comes in quite handy. And most bike computers will give you that option. And it basically gives you your average over the three second period. So it will change, but not so dramatically. And it's much easier to sort of pace your effort off. 
and there's one other version, normalized power. This is a calculation of your power taking into account the conditions. As a result, it can give you a more realistic number and you'll be pleased to hear if you're riding on hilly roads or varying your effort, it often actually comes out higher than the number that your average power shows. And if you're lucky enough to have a dual-sided power meter, then you can have the display for your left and your right crank or pedal. And that's quite interesting to see if you've got any imbalances and really focus on just making a nice even pedal stroke. Well, that covers the obvious benefits. And with a bit of time consistency using power, you will start to learn how to use this metric to notice and tweak some of the smaller things. For instance, if you are still using heart rate, then you may be able to start to correlate your effort and your power with your heart rate. And that may allow you to notice things like the early onset of fatigue and overtraining, or on a more positive note, improvements in your fitness. Yeah, and then you've also got the option of playing around with aerodynamics. So say you have got a relatively flat section somewhere without too much wind, well, you can simply ride that set distance at a set speed and measure your power output on it and then make some changes, whether that's to your position or something to your bike or accessories, ride it again at the same speed and see if your power's changed. And if your power numbers have dropped off, then that's a pretty good sign that you've improved your aerodynamics. Yeah, I've got to say that is something I have personally really enjoyed with power over the time when I have had time to do that. And also things like your cadence, increasing, reducing your cadence and seeing how my power is affected by that and if I can keep the power the same. And as you've mentioned with your aerodynamics, tweaking my position, what's the difference between my power output when I'm on the drops versus in the clip on aero bars when I drop my position lower. It's really, really fascinating. You can start to build this bigger picture and make yourself essentially a more efficient yeah, there's, there's so much out there which you can do, isn't there, to, to experiment. It's really yeah. interesting. Well, yeah, as you have probably seen, this is a very big topic. So if you do have any questions, please do drop them in the comments section down below. But we hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. If so, please do give it a like. Don't forget to give us a follow over on social media and subscribe just down below.